let's talk about the absolutely pathetic state of the current general election um, schedule for next year, the uh, presidential election. Um, so, you know, the, the last time we had a primary season like this uh, was probably 2016. Um, I mean, I guess technically it was 2012, but we're never going back to the way things were in 2012, at least not anytime soon, um, because Trump has just broken people's brains. And so, uh, 2016 is the last time we had a big GOP primary like this. And I remember that the primary season of 2016 was one of the most epic things I'd ever seen. Um, and the reason for that was Donald Trump. Donald Trump came in like a bull in a china shop and disrupted everything. And he was hilarious. And he was... He, he he was like the most epic presidential candidate um because he just he was so funny and he was just he was the only guy on stage he was just he was prepared to not be like everyone else and to be a little bit ridiculous and to be and to mock other people and uh he he made fun of everyone on that stage and it was so funny it was so satisfying to see those guys getting taken down a peg by someone else and so i mean there's there's a reason he won that primary cuz he was so good in that primary um but god so that was that was what I was expecting going into this one. I was like, okay, yeah, we're getting another 2016 primary season. We're gonna see some real fun shit. No, uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, I I tuned into the first um, pri GOP primary debate. I, I I decided to watch a little bit of it. And, uh, I, 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 I want, cause you know, I, I kind of like watching, I like watching them all the way through. I like watching all of them. I, I watched all of them, um, in 2016, but man, this time it, it's just, it's like, it's not even fun anymore. It's just pathetic. It's not even, it's not, there's nothing actually even worth watching about them anymore. It's just sad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the people they have on stage. I, I mean, the only one of them who actually has something going on is Chris Christie. And his, you know, he's like, He's the only one who was a veteran from the previous primary. Back back when Donald Trump hadn't completely taken over the GOP and turned it into a cult. And turned it into just a cult of him. Um, and so he's the only Republican on that stage who's like actually kind of unique. Um, even though he's just really just a standard Republican from before the Trump era, but now that just makes, that's, that makes him unique now. That's, that's a badge of uniqueness that you're a, a pre-Trump Republican. Ugh. Um, Chris Crispy. But, <laughs> that new guy, Vivek Ramaswamy, I cannot believe him. He is like, He's just, oh, he's so bad. He's so bad. He's such a piece of shit. And he's so see-through, too. Like, he's so clearly this just fucking dumb conspiracy theorist moron. 
who is good at talking and running his mouth, and so he's like, I'm gonna run for president. Like, I feel like anybody should be able to look at that guy and think, this guy isn't a serious choice, right? This guy's not a serious... But then again, people should have been able to see that about Trump, and they weren't. Um, and you can, oh man, the salt in the air. It, this is the saltiest GOP primate, primary I've seen ever. Because, like, honestly, the one in 2016 wasn't that salty because Trump just controlled the room. He, like, absorbed everyone's salt. Like, Ted Cruz tried to throw some salt in the air. He was like, that's mine. <laughs> You know, but this one is like the fact that Trump isn't in it is I don't know if, if that's the problem with it. Maybe Trump should be in these debates, but I kind of like the fact that he isn't in it because it's like even he's like, no, this is pointless because he all like I said, it's his cult now. Like, he already controls the party. So why does he need... He doesn't need to prove himself anymore. It's... The party is literally a cult. <laughs> so... He, they, he doesn't even need to show up anymore. Um, and the the one guy who I thought was like, Oh, yeah, this this guy might actually beat Trump. Was Ron DeSantis. For reasons I didn't really understand, but I heard him getting so much intrigue from the Republicans. I heard that people were really getting behind him. Like, just normal Republicans were like, Yeah, Trump's kind of lame now. He's kind of lame weirdo. But DeSantis, man. DeSantis is where it's at. Um... And I thought, wow, this guy might actually be something. And then I, I looked into him and I found, oh, wow, I really fucking hope this guy doesn't turn out to be something. Because this guy is evil. Like, Trump Trump is just dumb. But this guy is, this guy is Satan. So uh, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I, I would rather have Trump at this point. And uh, what's funny was that as soon as that uh debate started and i looked at ron DeSantis's actual performance like what he brought because i'd never actually seen him interact with anybody before once i saw what he was bringing to the table when it comes to the performance i was like well this this is a done deal there's no way this guy is doing anything <laughs> this 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 is this guy has no future in this this race um because he had no charisma. I couldn't believe it. Like, I had been hearing so much about this guy. He was upstaged by Chris Christie in that debate. Because Ron DeSantis was just like, I am a politician. Just robotically going through the motions in a really weirdly, like, he's trying to have a lot of energy, but you can tell he has none. It's like... What the hell was that? <laughs> maybe he was just maybe he was just nervous or something, but he he like he made no impression. He he just bricked it real hard. Um and then there was that woman. They they have their token females now in every single one of these. And uh there was that basically Amy Klobuchar as a Republican <laughs> who was like Quoting Margaret Thatcher, she was like, you know, Margaret Thatcher said if you want someone to talk about a problem, you hire a man. If you want someone to get something done, you hire a woman. And when she said that, I was like, okay, you are disqualified from ever being considered <laughs> by me. That was a great way to disqualify it. I mean, pretty much all of them disqualified themselves in their first line. But, God, Ron DeSantis, he was upstaged by Chris Crispy, and he was upstaged by Vivek Ramaswamy. He was, 
Like, this dude, this wild card just comes out of nowhere, and it's funny, usually, like, a wild card is like, oh, this guy has a chance, and you didn't expect it. But in this case, it's more like, oh, no, this guy doesn't have a chance because none of these people on stage have a chance. But he just happens to be the unexpected winner of these phony debates that aren't they don't matter because Trump's going to get the nomination because it's a cult. It's so stupid. They're doing these debates where they're pretending they're on on stage role playing and pretending that they're actually going to be president, that one of these guys is going to be president. None of them are going to be president. It's not going to happen. So stop pretending. Um, but anyway, I, I watched, I watched like half an hour of that debate, and I turned it off because, like, I was, I was struck by just how incompetent it was. Like the whole thing was sheer and utter incompetence, incompetence of intellect, incompetence of persuasiveness. Hold on. But yeah, apparently that that's uh that's what you got to do to be a Republican nowadays. You just have to be incompetent. Be as incompetent as possible. And then someone will vote for you. The only, so the, there was the black guy, and he seemed like an idiot. They, they always trot out the dumbest black guys. Have you noticed that? Like, um, in the last one, it was Ben Carson, who was probably the biggest retard on that stage. <laughs> Despite the fact that he was apparently a good brain surgeon. You think being a brain surgeon would make the guy intelligent? No. Um... So yeah, the black guy seemed really stupid, and then there was, uh, there was like two old white guys who just seemed like normal people, and they were like the only two guys who I actually kind of liked. They were the only two guys, like I think one of them was the governor of North Dakota, and it was, it was like, you can get rid of everyone else on this stage and just leave those two guys, and then it would be like a real primary. It would be like, oh, this is this is what a primary used to be. It was like actual politicians who didn't talk at a, a fifth grade level, who didn't dumb themselves down to the absolute lowest common denominator in the name of populism. It would it, it would be like an actual, you know, like a guy in a suit you know, giving you a yarn like you're used to. But no, uh, <laughs> we can't have those guys anymore. So those guys are out of the running, I think. I haven't heard anything about them. I've only heard about this Ramaswamy dipshit and Chris Crispy who's still holding on even though he has like negative three points. Like, what is this? Is this what we're doing now? The guy, the guy who's going to be the GOP nominee is, he, he is indicted for 91 criminal charges, many of them felonies. And I'm just impressed. I'm impressed more than anything else by what Trump has managed to accomplish. I mean, people were calling him Teflon Don a few years back. That was an understate that was the understatement of the century. This guy is like I mean, what is he? It's, he's not Teflon Don. He's freaking like Olive oil, Don. <laughs> like nothing can stick to this guy. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, oh, it's it's really impressive. Um, and it's funny how he managed to do it by being a total idiot at the same time. Like this guy is the biggest savant story I have ever seen because he he's a total dipshit who just managed to like become the most successful politician of all time. And I say successful, most successful of all time, because in a democratic, supposedly democratic system where he doesn't have like full control over the media, where he can just like become a dictator and, and like, uh, have like, Propaganda 24-7 bigging himself up. Um, and where a lot of the news media is very against him. He has managed to turn that into... These people like him more than Jesus Christ. And th these are the Jesus freaks who like him more than Jesus Christ. And trust him more than Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I think that this is unprecedented, and I think that this is one of the most significant events in American politics ever. I mean, can you can you even top this? Like, what is more significant than this? That this dude has managed to just break people's brains all over the country. And, like, everybody is broken by Donald Trump. Like, you know, Bill Maher used to be a progressive and Donald Trump broke his brain and now he's becoming a Republican, basically. <laughs> like, everybody in this whole media circus is just, like, they just can't handle Trump. He's just too much for everybody. Too much for people's intelligence. <laughs> it's like, how did this guy manage to do that? It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that isn't incompetent about this, uh, this primary season is Trump. But, yeah, whatever, whatever it looks like, it, it doesn't look good. Because <laughs> I, I usually, uh, I usually find these primaries interesting entertaining um but it's it's at the point where it's just too at this point it's just too stupid like we've we've descended into idiocracy level like this is this is just there's no point even watching it anymore anyway <laughs>